It's tiny and super cheap for an auto-emptying vacuum that also mops. But is this mini robot vacuum ready to handle dirt and hair like its bigger predecessors? Hey y'all, I'm Zach Khan from Smart Geek Home. Today I'm going to be reviewing SwitchBot's new compact K10 Plus robot vacuum. This is the smallest robot vacuum I've ever used. It's designed for tiny apartments, especially those that are densely packed with furniture or have a lot of tight corners. The size and especially the weight of this robot vacuum also make it ideal for homes with multiple floors, since you can just pick it up and move it from floor to floor with no issue. By the time you get your SwitchBot vacuum out of the box, it's almost ready to go. Just take all of the accessories out of the auto empty base, remove a few protective films and foam inserts, insert the vacuum bag into the base, Attach the side brush, which just pushes into place, no need for tools or hardware. Then connect the vacuum to the app and to your Wi-Fi and let it run. The first run will take longer because it has to map out your entire floor plan, but that's typical for most modern robot vacuums. It took it roughly two hours to fully map out and do the first cleaning of my 1200 square foot apartment. The mapping was mostly good. It even recognized that my great room should be treated as two separate rooms. Although the sensors got really confused by the mirrored closets in my bedroom, this whole area doesn't exist. The K10 Plus uses the same app as other SwitchBot devices. That makes it easy to work the robot vacuum into your already existing Switch Home automations or to create new automations that use multiple of your SwitchBot products with the vacuum. You could, for example, use a motion sensor or a contact sensor to make the robot vacuum stop when you or one of your pets enters a particular room. The robot vacuum section of the app is a whole new experience. That is, unless you've used other robot vacuum apps in the past, like the Roomba app. In which case, you're going to notice that this style is very similar to those. I found it mostly intuitive, although it could be cleaner, and it wasn't always obvious which buttons would open a menu and which ones would immediately initiate an action on the vacuum. The map allows you to delineate and name rooms and to declare no-go zones where your robot vacuum will not clean. I use these, for example, around areas cluttered with a lot of cables, like the rat's nest around my modem or the one around my desk. You can also set no mop zones, where it will vacuum but not mop. This is a must-have feature for a two-in-one robot vacuum mop, but it's missing from a lot of low-end and mid-tier models from other companies. You can clean the whole house or a specific room or area. The one thing that's missing is spot cleaning. I use that a lot for if I accidentally spill something or if I intentionally spill it for testing, as you'll see in a minute. The lack of that feature is disappointing, and the area clean option is just not a good replacement. One of my favorite extra features here is the cleaning plan, which you'll find under the room section. You can instruct the K10 Plus to use different section powers in different rooms or to clean certain rooms multiple times. My kitchen gets really messy, so I have it run twice through there on the strong setting. Most of the other rooms are fine with a single pass of the standard setting. And I might even use the quiet setting in rooms that I'm going to be working in during the day, or if you have a pet that might be upset by the noise, it might be a good option there. I'll let you explore the rest of the app, but there are a couple of extra settings I want to highlight really quickly. Reduced collision mode saved my ring light by stopping my robot vacuum from knocking into it too hard. Carpet mode is a must if you have medium to thick carpet. And if you have kids or really nosy pets, I recommend turning on the child lock so that they can't accidentally turn on the vacuum by pressing the buttons on the device itself. Like other SwitchBot devices, the K10 Plus works with Amazon Alexa, Google Home, Siri Shortcuts, and just about any other smart home ecosystem. It doesn't work with Apple HomeKit or Home Assistant yet, but that's scheduled to change in January when the K10 Plus gets full support for Matter. The feature set is where the K10 Plus really shines. Mid-range robot vacuums are usually lacking in two main features, the auto-empty base, and the ability to mop as well as vacuum. The auto empty base is a must have for a robot vacuum this tiny. The SwitchBot vacuum's dust bin only holds 150 milliliters of dust. Compare that to the Roomba i7, which holds 400 milliliters. And even with that one, I have to clean it out at least once, usually twice going through my apartment. So with the K10 Plus, I'd have to clean it out two to four times going through this apartment. That's not ideal. But the auto empty base holds four liters. That's 10 times as much as the dust bin on the Roomba i7, which means that with the auto empty base, I should be able to clean my apartment at least five times completely before needing to swap out bags on the base. And for those of you with allergies, like me, the fact that you're swapping out a bag instead of emptying a dust bin is also a huge win. The dust bin always sets off my allergies, the bags do not. Those bags are gonna add a little bit to the cost of maintaining your robot vacuum, but it's fairly negligible. 
To turn the K-Town Pus into a mop, all you have to do is put the mopping cover over the roller brush, add one of the included mopping pads, and press the button in the app to swap from vacuum mode to mopping mode. It's easy to make the switch, but for reasons I'll explain in a minute, I rarely bother. The K10 Plus has as much suction power as Roomba's highest end vacuum. In my testing, it had no problem getting up dirt and small objects. It struggled slightly with flour, especially after it had been ground into the floor, but after a couple of runs at its strong setting, it got it up just fine off of both laminate and rugs. It was able to grab hairs too, although it did have some problem with hairs getting tangled in the side brush, enough that I did have to stop and detangle it after the first run. Because of its compact design, the K10 Plus can clean behind and around objects in places that would be completely inaccessible to Roombas and other robot vacuums. Unfortunately, that means it gets to cords that I didn't even think we're going to be an issue because my Roomba never finds them. Along with cords, you need to watch out for other small objects like shoelaces and backpack strings. While the newer Roomba models have mostly figured out how to avoid or detach themselves from those objects, the K10 still needs help every once in a while when it gets into a situation. The K10 Plus is surprisingly quiet for a vacuum this powerful, and if you really need to cut down on the noise, you can go all the way down to the quiet mode, which is still plenty powerful for moderately dirty floors. The mopping function unfortunately leaves something to be desired, and you definitely need to make sure that your floor is completely free of dirt before you run it. Basically, what you're going to need to do is run a full vacuum, wait for it to recharge, run a full mop. And if you have roommates or pets, it can be really hard to keep things completely clean between those steps. The mop works about as well as a Swiffer mop with no muscle behind it. Then again, that's about what you'd expect when you're just attaching a mop pad to the bottom of a vacuum. I wouldn't buy the K10 Plus with mopping in mind, but I might still use it every once in a while when I'm feeling too lazy to properly mop my floor. Let's talk price. A decent mid-range robot vacuum will usually run you about $400 to $600. Add on about $200 if you want an auto-empty base. You could easily go out and pay $1,000 for a robot vacuum if you want one with an auto-empty base and a mopping function. The K10 Plus, on the other hand, is just half that price. Overall, the K10 Plus is a solid choice at its price point. This would not be my vacuum of choice for a large home, but it's a great option for a studio to one bedroom sized apartment or for a home with multiple small floors, especially if you don't have pets. And this price point is going to be hard to beat, especially for an auto empty vacuum. Please like this video and subscribe to the channel for all the latest smart home gadget news, reviews, and tutorials. And drop a comment letting me know what you think of the K10 Plus and what robot vacuum you're choosing to use in your home. Until next time.